anything that we do that is against God. If we lie, if we steal, if we disobey our parents, if we have sex before marriage, adultery, gossip, all of these sins separate us from God. He's the only one that came from heaven to earth for you. He's the only one that led a sinless life for you. He's the only one who died on the cross for you. He's the only one that took your punishment for your sins. He's the only one that shed his blood for you. And his, I wanted you to know. Now let's give a hand to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We thank you, Father. Thank you for being a mighty God. Thank you for being an awesome God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your embrace. Father, wrap us in your arms of love tonight. Help us all hear your voice. Soften our hearts towards your word. And have your truth set us free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. Everyone shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Before I begin tonight, tonight is your night of a miracle. I believe some of you will be speaking about this night for years and years to come. Some of your lives will be totally transformed tonight. I believe every sickness and disease will leave your body tonight. And do not leave. Because we're going to pray a prayer of blessing. Your families will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Your schools will be blessed. Rohunda Kishari shall be blessed. And you will walk out like this with a little dance because you will be loaded and loaded and loaded and loaded and loaded down with blessings. If you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. Just earlier today, they were baptizing people who got saved at the local river. So many people were baptized. But I'm telling you, don't miss. Don't miss your time. Because now is your time. Turn to your neighbor. Say, now is your time. For a miracle. Amen. Amen. 
We're going to read from John chapter 8 this morning. It says, so if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Everyone say free indeed. Say free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you might be here saying, Well, I think I'm free. I'm free to eat. I'm free to come here. But do you know the Bible says something different? The Bible says, Everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. In other words, before we know Jesus as the Lord of our lives, the Bible says that our sins have grabbed a hold of us. That we are enchained to sin. Maybe there's someone here tonight and you're in a relationship with someone other than the person you're married with. And you feel you're like you're in chains. Maybe it's someone here and you're poisoning people. And you're caught in the bond of sin. Maybe it's lying, maybe it's gossip. It may, might be depression. But I came to give you good news tonight. Because every person in this field, by the time you walk out, God is going to break every chain. He's going to break every addiction. And he is going to set you free. If you believe that, shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now I have a story. I have a story about this very verse. Who likes stories? Wave your hand nice and high. Does anyone like stories? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. This is a story about a young boy. And this young, young boy. This young boy was on vacation. He was from here and he went to Tanzania. As he was in Tanzania, he went to a town called Iringa. He was visiting some of his family in Iringa. And he was walking to the house. And all of a sudden he saw this river called the Ruha River. And the boy said, oh, I'm going to go for a swim. But he didn't see the giant crocodile that was coming towards him. See the father of, of, of the boy. The father of the boy saw his boy swim. And then the father saw that giant crocodile that was coming towards him. The father ran to the side of the river, waved his hands. And he said, son, come back. Son, come back. But the boy didn't hear. So the father in his tears, he cried even louder. He said, son, come back. Everyone say, son, come back. No, say it again. Say, son, come back. Just then the boy heard. And, and the boy turned in that river. And he swam as fast as he could. Directly to where his father stood. Just before he got to the side of the river. 
amazi. The father dove into the water. And he grabbed the boy by the arms. Just as he did. That giant crocodile. Jumped on the boy's leg. Creating much harm. And all of a sudden there was a there was a big struggle. You see, the crocodile was stronger than the man. But the father's love would not let his son go. Just then, a Maasai warrior, the father's friend, he came out of his house. He took his spear. He threw it in the crocodile's eyes. And then the crocodile went. Everyone go. And the crocodile went to the bottom of the river. But it was still attached to the boy. The father was grabbing with all of his might. And he said, son, kick the crocodile off. Son, kick, son, kick the crocodile off. I want everyone to say that with me. Go like this, go like this. <laughs> and say, kick the crocodile off. <laughs> say, kick the crocodile off. <laughs> Just then, the boy kicked that crocodile. And he fell into the father's arms that night. Two weeks later, a news reporter came to the boy. And he said, is it true that a crocodile jumped on your leg? The boy lifted up his pant leg. He said, yes, it's true. But then the boy started to cry. Because there were tears of great pride. He unbuttoned his sleeve. And he said, I have other scars. These scars are from my father's love. That would not let me go. My father's love was stronger than that crocodile. I wanted you to know. My friends. God's love is stronger than any crocodile of sin that tries to pull you down to the bottom of the river. I'm telling you that giant crocodile known as the devil he desires to grab a hold of our life. And he's not happy till he sends your soul to hell. You might be here saying, how is this true? Because the Bible says, he who sins is a slave of sin. No matter where you were born, no matter how good of a person you are, when we were born into this world, there are things that are in our life that are not right with God. Sin is anything that we do that is against God. If we lie, if we steal, if we disobey our parents, if we have sex before marriage, adultery, gossip, all of these sins separate us from God. You might be here saying, well, all of us have sinned. And to that, I would say yes. But the Bible says all of us have sinned. And the wages of sin is death. I'm telling you, if you don't have someone to pay for your sins, 
Just like that crocodile grabbed on that boy. The Bible says we are enslaved to sin. We cannot get out of it. But I did not come to talk about slavery today. I came to talk about freedom today. Because today you will be set free from that crocodile of sin that was leading you down, down, down. Jesus will set you free so you can go to heaven with him. If you believe that, shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sin is like darkness. And God has given us a prescription. The Bible says, Rudy Numa. So the Bibiria to Girango Hindu Chira. We have to Hindu Chira. To go Magu Hindu Chira. We have to turn from our sins. To go Magu Hindu Chira to cover Mumja Habdach. We have to turn from our darkness. To go Magu Hindu Chira to cover Mumujina Watch. All of the children stay here. Avana Mesa Memo Gumyohano. Do not go anywhere. All of the children stay Avana here. Avana Memo Gumyoga to Elimue Muji. We have to turn away from our sins. It's young of Bibiri to Girango Nugu Hindu Chira to cover Mumja Habdach. And we have to turn to the lights. Because the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. And when you turn to Jesus today the Bible says you will turn from darkness. You will set, be set free from the grip of sin so you can live your life for God. Now you might say this sounds good but why Jesus? Why not another way? It's, isn't that just religion? What I would say to that is that Jesus is not religion. We did not come here for church. We came here for salvation. Tonight Jesus is going to erase everything you've ever done. You will walk out new. You, you will walk out forgiven. You will walk out saved. And you will walk out free. Because to whom the sun sets free is free indeed. If you believe that, shout amen. Do you know Jesus? He's the only one that came from heaven to earth for you. He's the only one that led a sinless life for you. He's the only one who died on the cross for you. He's the only one that took your punishment for your sins. He's the only one that shed his blood for you. And his blood will cleanse you from sin. He's the only one that died on the cross for you. He's the only one that raised from the dead for you. He's the only one that is alive today praying for you. This is why the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. But at the wonderful, at the wonderful, precious name of Jesus. What is his name? What is his name? And I have good news tonight. There's another verse that I want to mention. It's in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. And this is what it says. And this is what it says. That if the son, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
haravuga ngo nukuri nukuri ndababwira yuko umuntu wese uzahamagara izina ry'uwiteka azakira how many believe that word tonight nibangaye bizera iryo shambu uyu munsi that everyone Man, woman, child, son, and daughter. Who calls on the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Now in the last town we had the audience repeat this verse. But I heard the people of this town are a little bit louder than Tanzania. Does anyone think Rwandans can be louder than Tanzanians? Oh, he believes. Anyone else? Who thinks you can be louder than the people in Tanzania? Okay, we are going to see. I want you to say this verse with me. Everyone's going to repeat it and say with all of your heart. Everyone say, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. But I'll have to go to the judges and ask. What do you think about that? Was, were they louder? I think they can be louder. Oh. She, said, she said Tanzania was louder. But I really believe in Rwanda. I think you got more in you. So we're going to try that again. I want you to say with all your heart. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Here we go. Everyone say everyone. Who calls? On the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But we have to check with the judges. Judges. I want to know. Were they the same? Yes. Or were they louder than Tanzania? The same. Oh, they said you were the same. But I really believe in Rwanda. Oh, I want Rwanda to win. So turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor. And say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, you ready? You ready? Okay, now, get a deep breath in. Get a deep breath. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Everyone. Say everyone. Who calls? On the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will have to go to the judges. Were they louder than Tanzania? Yes! Hallelujah! Woo! Rwanda wins! Rwanda wins! Rwanda wins! Rwanda wins. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! That verse is so important. Because it talks about everyone. No one's missed out. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not missed out. Turn to your other neighbor and say, God's looking at you tonight. 
Amen. Amen. He says, everyone who calls. See, that's something that we have to do. Your neighbor can't do it for you. Your mama can't do it for you. Your priest can't do it for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. God gave us free will. And it's your choice to call on his name tonight and it not only says call but it says something after that I want you to repeat that verse with me one more time say everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Now that's who we need to call upon. You can't call upon. Yes, good, good, good. Rwanda one. <laughs> good. We need to call on the name of the Lord. Many people call on many names. Oh, in many nations, there's so many names people call upon. You might call upon your mama to make to make cooking. You might call upon your daddy to help you with something. You might call upon a teacher because you don't understand something. But I'm telling you, there's only one person you can call upon. For your salvation. You know, when God made this world, it didn't cost him nothing. But your salvation cost God everything. He gave up heaven's best just for you. And if you make Jesus Lord number one of your lives, oh, you will get the end of the verse. Do you remember the last words that you said? Who remembers the last words that you said? Well, we're going to say the whole verse again. So everyone can remember the last word. Let's say it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Everyone say everyone. Who calls? On the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, when you call on the name of the Lord, you can be saved. That means every sin can be forgiven. Every, every bondage, you will be set free. And you will be given heaven. Because heaven is a gift. And God wants to give you heaven tonight. When Jesus was on that cross, he was crying for you. His blood was running down his body for you. He was in pain and agony for you. 2,000 years later, his eyes were on you. Saying, if I don't go through this, they can never be forgiven. But I'm telling you tonight, you can be forgiven. You can be saved. You can go to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when shall we call on his name? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, he said, At the acceptable time, I listen to you. At the acceptable time, I listen to you. At the day of the salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Do you know this 
Bible tells you when the day of your salvation is. Who would want to know when the day of your salvation is? Raise your hand. If we could look over the shoulder of God and look on his calendar there would be one day that he would look at for your salvation do you want to know that day? wants to know that day. If you want to know that day, wave your hand. If you want to know the day of your salvation, wave your hand. Because this verse tells about that day. He said, he said, now is the day of your salvation. He said, now is the time of salvation. So the day of your salvation. According to the Bible, is today. But it's not only today. The Bible says now is the time of salvation. That it's not tomorrow. That it's not next week. But it's right now. Like a man drowning in an ocean. He's, he doesn't need to be saved tomorrow. He doesn't need to be saved three hours from now. A man drowning in an ocean needs to be saved right now. That's why the Bible says now is the time of salvation. Now call upon the name of the Lord. Tomorrow is not promised. You have right now, you have right here and right today. Do you know there's people in hell not because they didn't know about Jesus but because the devil tricked them and said, oh, don't worry about today. You can call upon Jesus tomorrow. Enjoy your life of sin. But I'm telling you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. What? That's a lie. Because those people that always kept waiting and waiting. Tomorrow never came. And I want to give just one story. That a wonderful famous evangelist. Said on this uh, stage earlier, Jennifer. She mentioned a story about a man named Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke. And he was preaching and preaching. And he was at the door of the church. He was shaking hands with people. And he turned to the girl next to him. And, and he said, did you find salvation in Jesus? The girl started to cry. She said, no. I haven't found salvation in Jesus. He, he, the, the preacher said, well, why not? And the boy said, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because my boyfriend hates Jesus. Oh, and I love my boyfriend. He's so handsome. He brings me flowers. He brings me samosa. Oh, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him. And then she shook herself and she ran out of the church. The very next morning, someone ran to that evangelist and said, did you hear what happened to that girl? This is a real story. This really happened. The evangelist said, no, what happened? The man said, the girl that left this area just last night. She got in a terrible car accident and died. All of a sudden, the evangelist heard that. The dinner that he was eating got stuck in his throat. He went on his knees. He said, God, did I preach the gospel well enough? 
Did I preach it with enough urgency? And he heard a voice that said, you did all you could. Today, there's a girl that wanted, God wanted to forgive. But she was unforgiven. Today, there's a girl that God wanted in heaven. But today, she is in hell. Today, God gave a girl a choice. But she rejected God's greatest gift. Because she thought she had another day. Now is the time of salvation. Don't be like that girl. Call on his name today. Receive your freedom from the grip of that crocodile of sin. Receive your forgiveness. Receive your heaven. Because everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for every person. If there's someone here, you know you're living in sin and you, and you need to be forgiven. You need to turn from your sins. You want to be set free from that crocodile of sin. And you want to live your life for God. If you want that tonight, raise your hands. If you need Jesus to come into your life tonight, as your Lord, as the number one of your life. If you need Jesus, raise your hands right now. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Yes. If you know you need to turn from your sins and, and turn to God. Raise up your hands today. Do not wait for tomorrow. Now is the time of salvation. One last time. Don't miss out like that girl. If you want Jesus, if you want his forgiveness, if you want heaven, raise up your hands before the Lord. And we're going to pray. I want you to pray with all your hearts. Remember, this is for people that only want to go to heaven. If you don't want to go to heaven, don't raise up your hands. But if you want to go to heaven, raise up your hands for Jesus. Say Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you took my punishment. I believe you rose from the dead. I surrender all of my life to Jesus. I turn away from my sins. And I am free. I am forgiven. I have Jesus. And I have the gift of heaven. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Everyone shout hallelujah. Now if you just said that prayer. For the first time tonight. Those who truly made a decision for Jesus. And you turned away from your sin. And you made a decision for Jesus tonight. If you did that tonight, I want you to wave your hand. Those who made a decision for Jesus. Now everyone who filled out a card the last three days. 
Please do not raise up your hands. But if you, but if you made a decision for Jesus today, and you gave your heart to Jesus today, raise up your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Now I have certain friends. They are in colorful vests. Friends, I want you to wave your cards nice and high. Friends, wave your cards. Wave your cards in the air. Friends, friends, wave your cards in the air. Wave your cards in the air. Now I want everyone who just put their hands up to find a person with the card. Go to them right now. We're going to get your information. You're going to have a personal person so they can walk you in your closer walk with God. We're going to connect you to a local church. So please, please go right now. Find one another. One more time, if, one more time, if you made a decision for Jesus, raise your hand. If you made a decision for Jesus tonight, wave your hands. Now, people with the cards and the people with your hands up. Go find one another. Go, go find one another. Go find one another. In Jesus' name. He's going to have some, in, some very soft instrumental. Yes. How fathers who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How fathers. I can have all of the children to come. Yeah, 